Okay, I think we got that camera figured out now, Mr. Producer. And ladies and gentlemen, a little technical problems here because I'm still learning my trade. But we've got a book today I want to share with you and a little bit on her story. Uh, a great uh, cow person. But this time we're going to talk about a woman who was raised on a 190-acre ranch. And the book was written by her brother, uh, Alan Day O'Connor. Mr. Producer, can you zoom in on this book? Okay. Producer's zooming in. Great producer I have, and the price is right. Okay. You want to zoom out now? Don't zoom. Okay. Okay. Um, Sandra Day O'Connor's who we're talking about raised on the Lazy Bee Ranch. That's what the book is called, the Lazy Bee Ranch. Let me put my specs on here. See if I can read something. She was born in March the 26, 1930, uh, in uh, El Paso, uh, Texas. But she was the Lazy Bee Ranch extended from I-10 to I-40. And that's about 160 miles, I think. Certainly more than a cowboy could ride in a couple days' time on a good horse. Uh, but she was the first woman nominated to be Chief Justice, to be a, a Justice of the United States Supreme Court. In fact, um, it was an all men's club for a couple hundred years. And when she first went to work, as a Supreme Court Justice, they didn't even have a ladies' room in the place. And but I'd like to talk about her ranch. Uh, she was grew up in the old days like people did. They didn't even have uh, electric on the ranch until 1940. <coughs> Before that time, they had to use a, a generator if you wanted electricity. Uh, she learned to shoot at an early age in life. Jack rabbits, coyotes, anything that would menace the farm. And she could drive a car as soon as she could look over the screen. Over, not over the screen, but over the uh, dash on the car. Now, one of the things about being a ranch child, you know, you want to come of age uh, like all children do. And one of the things was that when you could get on a horse and ride out a long ways and find your way back to the ranch, you're making profit. Now, unlike us Easterners, um, you started. They started riding before they could actually get in the saddle. Somebody had to pick them up. <clears throat> in fact, her, her and Alan one day were on a trail drive, still as young children, and uh, he got these uh, thorns in his leg, uh, cactus thorns, uh, child cactus, like I can say it correctly. <coughs> it's called a jumping cactus. It seems like the spines would jump out at you. And they had to stay in the saddle for three or four hours so he got back with the crew so they could help him off the horse and get the uh, uh, spurs out of them. Uh, the ranch they were raised at was uh, headquartered around Antelope Wells, New Mexico. And the Lazy Bee bordered the uh, New Mexico and Arizona. In fact, they ran along the Hill River. The Hill River uh, is also a trail going out to California. It was the most, one of the most ambitious trails that you had in America. The ranch itself was formed in 1980. In the 34s, uh, we had 1934, we had no rain. And, you know, they had to reduce the herd by 800. Now, the federal government came up with a program for ranchers that they would uh, um, buy the cows and slaughter them. And you got $12 per cow if you sold it off to the government. Now think about that. We pay $12 nowadays for a hamburger without french fries. And that was only a, a 90 years ago. And that electric in 1940, I sold that. Now, father, even though he was not greatly well educated, had an appreciation for it. Uh, he sent uh, Sandra off to uh, a woman's boarding school over in. El Paso, but he read everything he could get a hold of, 
and he stayed abreast of world news. And that later came on to help her. Now, we're not going to go into her politics. Uh, if you want to really know about cases that she ruled on, <clears throat> and everybody agrees she was a brilliant jurist, uh, just go on Wikipedia, look it up, and it has all the cases. Now, they had windmills on there. Some of the windmills, the uh, wells, went 800 feet. I can tell you, I got a well uh, 380 feet, and it's quite a bit of money and a lot of time and labor just to get water from that well to my house. But wells would uh, break down. <clears throat> Anything mechanical would break down, and they would have to go out and they would pull the shaft out of the ground, find a broken space. Uh, you know, in fact, well, uh, wind wells, windmill, water wells, they had to have oil put in, so just like a car does. And some of the cowboys would ride around in a buckboard with a bunch of oil and check all the windmills, and that would be the responsibility for that week. You know, we don't ever think of John Wayne riding around on Old Dollar putting. Uh, oil in an oil well. She was also a first female attorney general in Arizona. Uh, news media, like World News, things like that, at one time in her life, rated her as one of the most powerful women in the world. She received the Presidential Freedom uh, from Medal from President Obama. President Obama. She was an active member in 1975. She'd remember uh, greatly uh, fond memories of going to El Paso in the wintertime and having to stay warm in a sleeping bag in the train because trains weren't really warm in those days. Uh, her father would allow her to, when she come home to bring four friends and um, he was always found with great curiosity that the uh, people didn't live on ranches. The Eastern people especially, they would stop by, did not understand what it takes to grow a cow and get it to market. One of her milestones growing up is being able to go on roundups and be able to ride and find the, the cowboys. They talk about their ranch life a lot. The women folks got up at 4 o'clock in the morning, the men got up at 4 and started making breakfast. One day when I was checking the well wells, uh, she asked her, uh, water wells, asked her father how come they didn't go to church and it was quite simple. Church was a long ways, plus he said the preachers weren't that good. Now the cows were rounded up twice a year, spring and fall. And their ranch had about six uh, people in the uh, off season and about 12 at roundup times. Her father did not approve of unnecessary cruelty animals, and that included just the cowboys practicing the roping skills on a horse. It aggravated them and burned off the beef, and he didn't like doing that. They had a lot of uh, uh, pets. Uh, her personal opinion of a pet is they are agreeably, agreeable friends. Her favorite cat was Snowball, the only cat allowed in the house. Her mother would stand by the door and kill flies when people came in. Can you imagine all that? The first pet her father had was a bobcat. This nicknamed it Bob. It eventually became a, a, a household pet. And they had a sparrow they found on the ground, brought it back to health and raised it. Uh, now, she, a personal reading as a young lady, she liked uh, the Drew Mysteries. One day, um, her father interrupted her while she was reading the Drew Mystery and wanted her to go with her. They took her out in the range to see a calf that was hurt. The calf had been attacked by uh, coyotes, and uh, most of its back leg was gnawed off. And she wanted to know, you know why couldn't they do anything. He says, too far gone. And the best thing to do is just to put it down. That's a nice way. Of, that's a nice way of saying killing it. Put it out of its misery. Let's see. I probably didn't do a very job.
Well, she had many different jobs as a young lady. She was in the uh, YR, as that stands for Young Republicans. She was nominated to be a Supreme Court Justice, President Reagan, and I remember him giving her a little coaching uh, on how to do it. So I invite you to read this book. It really goes more in detail than I can do justice for the book. Until next time, this is Cowboy Ron coming to you.